Georgia Tech's down by five runs in the bottom of the seventh inning, but they got the bases loaded and no outs, and that ball is smashed, going, going, grabbed by Larissa Pruitt, the right fielder. That's out number one. What a catch. Throws it into the infield. They double up the runner on second. That's out number two. They go to third. They double up the runner on third. That's out number three. Game-ending triple play for Alabama, and they are celebrating. The only problem, the runner on third. Third tagged up within the rules, legal, scored the run. It wasn't a triple play. It was a double play, one run scored, and then they struck out the next girl to get the third out. Why can't I show you all this? Well, just like Alabama, the broadcasters, they also thought this ended the game and the stream just cut out. They didn't. Pretty fun, though. That's something you missed that you never planned on watching. And this is everything you missed that you never planned on watching. And today's episode is brought to you by Blitzball Battle 4. It debuts tonight. If you're watching this on Sunday, February 18th, my birthday, then it it debuts tonight. It's awesome. Check it out. If you have not checked it out, just check it out once. That's all I ask. And subscribe to the channel if you want. Let's keep going. We had the first no-hitter thrown in the Caribbean series since 1952 when Cuba's Tommy Fine did it. And this is the only base runner that Angel Padron from Venezuela is going to allow in this game. We're in the eighth inning. He had him 0-2, the leadoff batter. He walks him. That's the only base runner he allows. And he still gets this dude out on the double play, so he still faces the minimum in the game, which is kind of just like bittersweet. 27 up, 27 down, but the one guy he got up and on and then down. We're going into the ninth inning here. He's got to get three outs. I like seeing him and the catcher work. I always love this stuff. They open up with the slider. It's kind of a show-me pitch in the dirt. Wasn't a competitive pitch, but showed them, showed the batter. Not a fastball. Then they go outside fastball. He hits his spot perfectly. They try to go a little more outside or hit that spot. Foul ball. Two strikes. Now the catcher says, great, let's bring that shit in. He thinks we're going to stay away. We're going to bust him in. Bam. Strike three. That's nice pitching. Hitting his spots. Look at the overlay. Outside, inside. He's got both sides of the plate covered. He's one out away, and now they're just like fastball. Let's just do it. Fastball's working. Throw the fastball. That might have been a changeup that got away. I don't know. They didn't have the miles per hour. That's a swing and a miss. And now, one, two count. Catcher's going to say, hey, now let's throw that changeup and throw it with some fun, some pizzazz. Gets him out in front of it, rolls it over to the shortstop. No hitter. Venezuela, way to go. Good job. You guys missed it. Some of you probably didn't miss that. It was a pretty big deal, especially if you're from Venezuela. Next up, we got the Pro Volleyball Federation. And look at this dude rocking his free T-shirt over his collared work shirt, just grooving. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Supernovas? Uh-huh. Rise? Yep. I'm here. Oh, yeah. Hello, me. Yeah. What up? Now, how many times do you think this ball gets touched by a player? I'm going to pause it. We're at five. Every time it gets touched by a new player, I count. You got to invite someone into the room and you're going to guess over under 33 and a half touches by the volleyball players. Place your bets. Friendly wagers. Put something on the line. Let's watch it. We're at five. That's six, seven, and we're over eight. Digs it out. Nine puts it up. Ten. We're over 11 with the dig. 12 up. 12 or 13 over, okay, 14 set, 15 set, 16 spike, 17 dug out, back up to the middle, 18, 19, little teardrop saved, 20, bumped up, spiked, we're at 23 now, okay, another set, over, blocked, all the way to 27, another set, oh, blocked, 30, 31, and 32, teardrop, saved, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, spike, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, big old spike, 47 and out. Oh, hell yeah. Way to work. Way to work. That's who we are. They were the comeback kids multiple times in this match. Omaha ultimately wins in four sets. And did you win? You bet over? It was over. 
some drama in the Six Nations rugby match between Scotland and France. Drama. I don't like this at all. These two dudes, they're about to butt heads and go to war, but first they touch each other and say, hey, good to see you. How you doing? Get some beers after the game. Okay, game time. Let's lock in. This is a weird sport, man. This is like a human experiment. I mean, it's not a weird sport, but that scrums are weird. It's like a human experiment of like, what can we do to ourselves? Oh, he just pushes that dude way back. So France is up by four. Scotland would need a try to take the lead. All right, we're running out of time. We're in the 79th minute. Time's counting up. Five grabs it. He inches like one body length to the right, goes down, gives it to the next guy. He goes one body length to the right, but a little further, goes to the next guy, number 11. And is he in? Is he in? No. He gives it to the next guy. And is he in? Is he in? Is that the game? Did Scotland just win? What's going on? No. They give it to the next guy. And is he in? Is he in? Scotland says yes. That's a try. Yes. Yes, France says no. France says no. Referee says soft. No, I don't think he touched the ball to the ground. Fans are saying, please, please, please. I don't think he got it. I don't think he got it. Yeah, of course he got it. I Please, he had to have get it. Yes. And look, the ball is there. Has to touch the ground. It's not touching the ground there. It's going to come down on top of the shoe right there. That's his first effort to ground it. Now, after that, He squeezes and moves it, and it's going to slip behind the elbow. Now, is that on the ground? Is that loose? Is he no longer holding it? Scotland's like, ooh, mm, I don't know if we're certain here. Uh, My best judgment would say, like, yeah, he got that on the ground, but they soft-called no, that it didn't hit the ground, so it's not a try, so they got to find evidence to overturn it, and this dude is optimistic, but, and then they say, hey, we determined there was enough evidence to say it hit the ground, so the call stands, and Scotland dude, Russell's like, okay, loser, and everyone from France is so excited, these dudes do double high five perfectly into like a chest bump, because they're rugby dudes, the dude behind them grabs the ball and just boots it down, and then we got fire breath here, Breathing all over his, like he had cold ice coming out of his, like a dragon, that instead of uh, fire, they screamed cold ice. (sighs) You're sick now. You have what I have. You are who I am. Last topic, we have the bean pot where Northeastern University was down in the third, and they tied it up with about 10 minutes to go on that play, which was unfortunate situation for BU. Versus NU, bunch of new boos. That guy's solid fist pump. Look at this. I like breaking this down slowly. The goalie's searching for the puck. I think this is not by design, by happenstance. Searching for the puck. Now, his defensemen, both his defensemen are in the way of him seeing that puck. So the goalie moves his head to the left to try and find the puck. Just as he slides his body and his feet to the left, the pass goes to the right. The timing on that's perfect. I think it's just happens. I don't think the defenseman's like playing that. There's no way he is. But that just puts him delayed and out of position to not save that shot. And that's a bummer because he wanted to save that shot. But Northeastern ties it up. Northeastern won last year in a shootout. Going for back-to-back, they go to OT here. They're like, we don't want to do the shootout thing again. We covered that last year on Things You Missed. And now with 42 seconds left, that shot, not close, bounces around. Now they got a little bit of an odd man rush, and there's going to be beautiful spacing here. Drops it to his man, right? But the defenseman breaks it up. But the defenseman gets his stick poked by number 11. It's actually really cool. So number 11 drops the puck. Then he takes that defenseman stick and lifts it up so he can't bat the puck away. So that defenseman now tries to use his skate to kick it, botches that number nine or 99 or 29 there. He's still fighting for the puck. He's able to quickly grab it, get it to his backhand. And meanwhile, number 11, who kind of was the whole playmaker here because he dropped it, he takes the defenseman stick out, And he hangs around knowing, oh, this has a chance, spins around to get his power uh, and his blade on the offside, on the stick side. The pass is made, and they score and win. Number five on BU just got a light stick, and it cost him. The coaches are are celebrating, pounding each other's chest, screaming, can't really do anything. And then the goalie's sad. 
The goalie's sad. But the fans are ecstatic. Like, double fist pump, screaming, yelling. We got hugging, shirtless dudes hugging, hoodie and shirtless dude hugging. Uh, tongue out for that dude. And then a bunch of shirtless dudes going to be hugging to the right over there. I think I didn't show you, but I promise. Number five, your stick's light. Heavier stick. All right? And they win. Good job. Good job by them. Good job by you. Good job by me. Good job by Rob. Good job by Dalton. Good job by Tori. Good job by everyone that works on the show. Thanks for sticking around. Appreciate you. Go check out Warehouse Games, Blitzball Battle 4. It really is a weird TV show, sports, unique, bizarre thing that people that watch it seem to love. Thank you. Goodbye.